Jiminy Willikers. Oh, God. <laughs> Suzuki has finally expanded the Jimny portfolio with this, the XL, which adds two extra doors back there. So it's longer, more practical, and even a little bit tougher than the three-door Jimny. Better yet, it's still dirt cheap, priced at under $35,000 brand new. Too good to be true? What do you reckon? Leave a comment below, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get to it. The retro cool Suzuki Jimny is an iconic vehicle whose lineage can be traced back to 1970. We're now up to the fourth generation which arrived in 2018 and has been a sellout success ever since. There's a 6 to 12 month wait on all Jimnys, yep, even the new 5 door version, which is 34 centimetres longer and 90 kilograms heavier than the 3 door version. The Hyundai Venue and Toyota Yaris Cross are roughly the same size but take them off road and they'll fold quicker than Superman on laundry day. The Jimny has always been an affordable adventure machine and nothing has changed with the stretched five door version, which commands a reasonable $3,000 premium over the three door model. There's only one model grade, GLX, but you can choose between five speed manual or four speed automatic transmissions, both with low range gearing. And today we're testing the four speed auto. In some ways, this is exceptionally good value for money, especially when you consider this vehicle can match the likes of a Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series on tricky terrain. But in other ways, it's sorely lacking, such as in the safety department, but more on that later. The Jimny is backed by a fairly standard five-year factory warranty in Australia, but servicing costs are pretty exy, averaging roughly 450 bucks per year. But you probably won't care about service costs once you take delivery of this mud plugger, which gets several upgrades to deal with its extra size and weight. Compared to the Japanese-built three-door Jimny, this five-door Indian-built off-roader gets stronger springs, recalibrated shockers, and a larger stabilizer bar, but rides on the same full-width rigid axles with coil springs. Upgraded front brakes improve thermal dynamics, better cooling, while Suzuki engineers have added an extra cross member to the ladder frame to improve chassis rigidity with that extra length of weight. It retains the same 15 inch alloy rims with these Bridgestone Dueler tires and the same 210 millimeters of ground clearance as the smaller Jimny. The approach and departure angles are also very similar, but because of its stretched body, the ramp over angle drops from 28 to 24 degrees. And I almost forgot to mention the Jimny XL gets a stronger drive line with a more robust prop shaft and automatic transmission. But don't get too excited about the powertrain. I've thrown my leg over motorcycles with engines bigger than this, and it's a pipsqueak in every respect with virtually no redeeming qualities. It's dirty and can't be sold in Europe as a result, and super underpowered. It couldn't pull the skin off cold custard. Suzuki reckons it's fairly efficient, but we'll see about that later in the video. All right. Charming is the first word that pops into my head when I sit in this vehicle, which kind of translates to cheap. But hey, the overall look and feel is intrepid and hardy, and it works. And I love the fact that this central touchscreen is now bigger. You know, you can see where some of that extra $3,000 has gone. Fit and finish is pretty rudimentary, but the harsh, unforgiving plastics should be fairly durable. The seat's cloth upholstery looks and feels awful, but the cushions are comfy and the seats have four-way manual adjustment. Little touches like the passenger side grab handle with exposed bolts and toggle switches speak to its thrill-seeking spirit. The multifunction steering wheel has loads of useful controls on it, such as for the audio, for the cruise control, for your phone, but apparently it's leather, but it feels like plastic to me. And it only adjusts for height, which is annoying for long-legged types like myself. But look, it's not too bad. What is bad is storage solutions. They are not very good at all. You've got a little area here for your phone, two very average cup holders, 
tiny, useless door pockets. Um, 12 volt socket, USB A port, tiny glove box, and this shelf here, stuff's just gonna fall off that. And I feel like this area here could have been really well utilized for some extra storage. Thankfully, Suzuki has upgraded its infotainment doodads, and this nine inch touchscreen works well with a basic but intuitive menu system and lovely Android and Apple smartphone integration. The single zone automatic climate controls are simple and effective too. Jimny XL also adds a better stereo, four speakers up from two, and it gets a digital radio tuner as well. But it misses out on useful adventuring equipment like GPS based sat nav. The driver's instrument panel is ultra basic, but looks kind of cool with the square binnacles and round dials. You've also got a trip computer with one, two, three, four, five, six different modes, if you count the blank screen. The reversing camera has a pitifully low resolution and no fancy tricks, but Suzuki has added rear parking sensors now. Adaptive cruise control comes with the more expensive automatic transmission models, which is a nice touch but if safety is high on your agenda, you're barking up the wrong tree. This vehicle remains untested by ANCAP and the three-door Jimny got a three-star ANCAP rating back in 2018. All right, the back seat, oh, there we go. Let's pull that up much better. That extra 34 centimeters of body length does liberate more leg room, but it is still pretty tight back here. But look, headroom's not bad and the seats themselves they're not uncomfortable and I wouldn't be too upset to spend an hour or so in the back seat of this vehicle. However, amenity is not great. Apart from the holy shit handles, electric windows and a cup holder here with this super loose plastic fitting and the door pockets, there's not much else. There's no USB ports and there's no air vents. Full size spare wheel on the back and windscreen wiper, nice. You've got the barn style opening rear door with a very firm damper that kind of pushes itself open at the end. I don't know if that's a feature or an idiosyncrasy, whatever, it is what it is. The actual boot itself is pretty cramped, but it's more than double the size of the regular Jimny. There's a wheel jack under here, 12 volt socket, a crappy light, and no tie down points. The seats fold down easily, but speaking of crappy, check out these exposed seat fold latches and the electric rear window demisters. There's significant pros and cons here. However, I'm still fairly buoyant about a positive verdict, given its super low price and off-road ability. Cue the driving music. First impressions, it all feels a bit low tech which I kind of like. It's small size and it's analog feel. Gives a, a really good car to drive a connection when you're just cruising around. And it's got way more charm than your average everyday mainstream SUV. Gun the throttle, however, and that charm is quickly washed away in a raspy, breathless thrum that's uninspiring at best and laboriously sorrowful at worst. It's slow to rev, has flaccid power delivery and is arguably one of the most lacklustre power plants available today. In short, the 1.5 litre petrol engine has about as much charisma as roadkill. But again, in some ways, that's part of its charm. You've got to take your time here. Handling dynamics are not great. In fact, they're abysmal, but then this vehicle's solid or live axles front and rear with coil springs are designed for bush bashing, not corner carving. The steering is light and fluffy. It feels vague and the car wanders left to right at higher speeds and combined with short gearing, it makes highway driving a chore. Oh, and the turning circle is woeful compared to the three door Jimny, rising from 9.8 to 11.4 meters curb to curb. This can make urban driving a lot more effort than it needs to be, and three-point turns end up being, well, a little bit ham-fisted. Ride comfort is acceptable. The agricultural suspension making the rear end feel a little firm at times on bumpy roads. 
As predicted, the Jimny ain't half as efficient as Suzuki insists, and that small 40 litre fuel tank doesn't help its cruising range either. Visibility is quite good, the tall rectangular mirrors delivering excellent vision, as do the upright windows. So, to sum up, the Jimny simply cannot match the refinement levels of modern SUVs on the road. But what about off-road? Well, that is an entirely different story. The fidgety suspension feels far more settled on the rough stuff. And while the engine could do with a bit more mumbo, the low range gearing really helps scrabbling up steep hills. Indeed, whack it into four low and she becomes quite the mountain climber. There's a confidence to this car that is just absolutely lovely. And having those four wheels at each corner, that adds a bit more confidence as well. You've got these upright windows, you can see exactly what's going on around you and it just makes it so less scary to drive off road and so much more compelling. Wheel articulation is impressive and when one wheel rises up, the solid axle pushes the other wheel down to increase tyre contact on challenging terrain. All right, let's try downhill descent control, fall low. That's better. When you just leave it in four wheel drive, it's about 10 kilometers an hour and it just seems to fly down the hills. Feels really sketchy, whereas yes, in fall low, this is a much better pace down steep declines. Negatives? Not many, I mean, doesn't have locking diffs and that fuel tank is a bit small, but it's hard to complain off-road. It is just getting through all our usual tracks so easily. It feels like a, a spry mountain goat. It's so light on its feet and it's really easy just to come up to these tricky obstacles and waltz through them. It's surprising. A big part of that is its light weight as well. And it comes back to on-road performance cars. The lighter the weight, the better the performance. And so it doesn't need too much trickery to be super, super capable off-road. Overall, its on-road behaviour is pretty sloppy, but off-road it is absolutely tremendous. And that iconic look means it'll always turn heads. And as such, Suzuki Jimny and Jimny XL sales have skyrocketed in Australia. The allure of this retro rock crusher is colossal. And even if it was a bucket of bulbs, which it kind of is in many respects, it would still be a sellout success. But for all that, at the end of the day, there's a lot to like about this flawed little box on wheels. And I've had quite a lot of fun with it, despite all its shortcomings. And when you consider there's no other 4x4s that offer this level of capability at this price, it almost is too good to be true. It's a beautiful paradox. Yes, it's rough around the edges, it's mechanically flawed, but I still love it, and I'd buy one. Thanks for watching, hope you liked the video, and what would you do with one of these? Would you modify it, keep it stock? Me personally, I'd maybe juice that engine up a little bit. Anyway, have your say in the comments. Don't forget to like and also subscribe to the Car Sales channel.